Lord Jesus, bless the eyes and ears of the listeners. I plead your blood on this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, we've done went over that we have to study God's word. Yesterday's video was about studying God's word, why and how. Okay, today we talked about sins. Okay, and now we're going to talk about God's plan of salvation. All right, so if you haven't seen yesterday's two videos, go watch them. And today's video, go watch it. It's on my channel and this one. So I was going to do Google Meets, but I, I haven't had a, uh, anybody, I don't, nobody seems to be, uh, I don't know if y'all are interested in doing that or not. I haven't heard from anybody, because um, I said if y'all want to do it to, those that have been doing it to email me, and I haven't heard anything. So you have to tell me in the comments section if y'all want to do Google Meets or what. It's about the, I could do the same thing here. Just we can't talk as openly here on this platform as we can on Google Meets. For those of you that want to ask about the V or want to ask about um, the shot, you know, things like that, we can't talk here. We can talk, so I was going to go there a few nights a week and do some schooling. But I could do the same thing here. Just we can't talk here like we can there. Okay. All right. So just let me know. So God now offers salvation to us through what? Faith in Jesus Christ. We are saved through our faith in Jesus, not through any religion or good works. Your good works that you got to do, your obedience to God doesn't save you, okay? Admitting, number one, admit and repent that you're a, admit to, that you're a sinner openly and repent. Repent from your sins means to stop doing them. That's what repent means. You don't live in sin or you never did repent, Okay? The second thing is to believe that Jesus Christ died for each one of us and rose again from the dead. Number three is the risen, receive the risen Christ by faith as your own personal savior. Receive him. And number four is publicly confess him as your Lord. Speak up and tell others about him that he's your God, that he just saved you. Okay, and here's what happens when we receive Jesus in that way. Look over here. Number one, okay, he comes to live forever in your heart, forever. He will never leave you. What happens is people leave him. People leave him. You're like, well, how, how could he never leave us and still say there's a narrow road? Many people won't make it because people leave him. He will never, ever leave you. People turn around and walk out on him. Lucifer did it. You understand? <clears throat> Number two is he gives you eternal life. People that truly have repented and that stop doing their sins and they move forward in Jesus Christ and the life he gave you, okay, gets eternal life, okay? And he also gives us the power to lead that life of righteousness. He gives us the power to live it. Remember I told you guys, when you are living for Jesus, when you've been saved, through faith and you live your life in Jesus Christ, you have power like a walking stick of dynamite. You are dynamite with what's inside of you. Okay. And he gives you the victory to live over sin. Okay. That he said, he'll send you the Holy, Holy Spirit. He sends you the helper. Okay. So think about this. Um, you can look at second Corinthians six, two. And you can answer this in the comments section. You can read in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, and Proverbs chapter 27, verse 1. The question is, when should we seek salvation? When should we seek salvation? Okay, and you can look in 2 Corinthians uh, 6, 2. And it's in Proverbs. 27.1. When should we seek salvation? Okay, look that up and answer that in the comment section. When should we seek salvation? All right, so. Oh. Uh, hold on a minute. Yeah, Proverbs 27.1. Yeah, that's right. So. The, okay, so the Bible rules out every attempt, okay, by man to save himself. You can't save yourself. Your good works won't save you. 
That's what you got to do after you're saved. When you give your life to Jesus, here come the work now. The work's got to come, the sanctification, okay? The obedience, okay? So, but man rules out every attempt by man to save himself or make himself righteous. Like Jesus said, the good works, y'all don't get confused. The good works are very necessary and they're commanded, okay? Once you've given your life to Jesus Christ and you got saved, Okay, but if you haven't done this and you're doing all these good works, and even if you're obeying him, y'all, you're obeying all his commands, but you haven't given your life to him, repented and admitted to him that you're a sinner, that you need him, it's worth nothing. It means nothing. First step is admit you're a sinner, repent, ask Jesus to save you and tell him you're sorry and stop doing those sins. Stop living that lifestyle. Then here comes the sanctification and the works that you will be judged on. Okay. Jesus will never leave you. He will never, ever leave you once you've asked him in. But many people, many people turn and walk out on him. And that's a choice he gives you. It's called free will. Okay? That's a choice he gives you. That's why some, some people believe always once saved, always saved. No, that's not true. Once you're saved, what the right way to say it is he will never, ever leave you. He never will turn and walk out on you. When you slip up and sin against him, he's still there, okay? Even when you turn and completely walk out on him and give up the Christian life, he's still there, okay? Just you forfeited your salvation, okay? He will never leave you. He's there constantly calling you back. That's what that word conviction means. He'll send you that word conviction. Say convict. Conviction. That's a love word. That means he'll, he'll saying, hey, you need to come back. You need to come back, turn around, come back. So you don't walk out on you, you walk out on him, okay? But I'm here to push you not to walk out on him. I am here to push you into a more powerful, more stronger relationship with him, okay? That's, that saving grace is received through faith in Jesus Christ. That's how you get it. You're saved through your faith in Jesus Christ by doing these steps right here. I told you, he told me that word believe doesn't mean that it's just acknowledging him or understanding it or agreeing with it. Believing means you believe his whole word, that he said you must admit it, repent, and stop living it. You must obey my words. You must love other people. You must start getting sanctified now. You better start believing it and living it. <clears throat> That's what Jesus said. Okay, so the law was not given to make man righteous. The law was given to show man that he is a sinner and that he cannot save himself. You can see Romans 3.20 about that. So just confessing sin without forsaking it does not gain the mercy of God for anybody. Just confessing it. If you admit it and you repent, it means nothing if you didn't stop doing it. Stop living that lifestyle Repent means you're ready to make a change. You make a change in your life and the way you think, talk, act, do everything. You make a change and you start now finding out what's God have for your life. Go after the Lord. Okay. So <clears throat> when God forgives sin, he also washes and cleans out the sinner's heart. Okay. Once the sinner is washed clean, he cannot, once you're washed clean, you cannot continue in those same sins that you just confessed. Can't do it, y'all. That's why there's a very narrow road. There's that road again, y'all. A very narrow road that Jesus said, very few is going to find it. Very few. Not very many. This whole rest of this is a big road to hell. Very few. Because there's very few Christians taking it serious. Okay? You're here. You're, if you're here on my channel, you're here to take it serious. Okay, so no man has a cure for his own sinful heart. Nobody does. Only the blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse it out and repair it. So you confess Jesus as Lord. To confess Jesus as Lord is, is a, a more accurate translation than the uh, New King James Version. Okay, you can look it up and compare 1 Corinthians 12, 3 and Philippians 2, 11. Okay. So the words of Jesus in Revelation 3.20, which we've already went through Revelation, you can look it up. The words of Jesus in Revelation 3.20 are addressed to a church at, uh, Laco I can't pronounce the word, Laod Laodicea. 
Okay, anyway, this church claimed to be Christian. They claimed it. Okay, but Christ Jesus himself was left outside their church, seeking to go inside. Okay, how many other Christian churches are like this today, y'all? Jesus promised to come in. His promise to come in is made to each of us as individuals. Okay, the promise was not made to the church as a whole. Receiving Jesus has always been a very individual decision. It's very individual. Your own soul, your own salvation for your own soul. A body of Christ can't save you. We help you. Okay, you can't save a body of Christ. You... You, it's for your salvation, it's for yourself. Something you have to do. Okay? So, uh, John chapter 3, verse 1 through 7 tells us that we must be born again. John 1, 12 through 13 tells us um, how we can be born again. Let me tell you that again. John chapter 3, verse 1 through 7 tells us that we must be born again. 1 John... Chapter 1, verses 12 through 13, tells us how we can be born again of God, okay? It is it is by receiving Christ Jesus as our personal Savior and Lord. Personal, okay? All right, I want you to do this. I'm going to erase some of this. Now, I told you all I'd be writing stuff down because I got to go through it. Be writing stuff down. Your memory verse for, for this evening is... John chapter 1, verse 12 through 13, that I just called out. John chapter 1. Hold on a minute. Your memory verse, excuse me. It's 1 John, 1 John, I'm sorry, no it's not. It's John chapter 1, 12 through 13. John chapter 1, 12 through 13 is your memory verse. So I want you to compare in Romans 6, 23. Wages to gifts. Okay? Wages to gifts in Romans 6.23. Compare. Okay, I want you to notice the contrast. Wages equals, okay, wages Okay, wages equals the just payment for the sins we have committed. The just payment for the sins that we have committed. Okay, gift. The wages is the just payment for my sin. Let's put that. Sins. Okay. Gift equals the free, undeserved grace of God. That's a gift from God. Free, undeserved grace from God. Okay, the Christian life continues. The, your Christian life continues as it begins by faith. Okay, Colossians 2, 6 says, As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Walk in him. That means live it. Now comes the part where you become a doer. After you've given your life to Jesus Christ, now you become a doer. Now's the time when you start doing your works. After you've given your life to Jesus Christ, that's the first thing you do. Then the works have to come. Because you need that sanctification. And it's through works that you help other people. It's through works that you obey God. Okay? Because he has a lot of stuff for us to do. So, we receive Jesus by faith. Okay? And we walk in Jesus by faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Okay? So, I'm going to give you a couple of... Uh, just a couple questions. I know I had y'all studying this this morning. I want you to, uh, I'm just going to write the verse down. I'm going to ask you the question, okay? It's something you can just study on your own, okay? I want you to answer this question. I want you to read Romans 3.20. 
Romans 3.20. Your question is, after what you just learned, can we be saved by keeping the law? That's your question. Can we be saved by keeping the law? Okay, and ask the, can we be saved by keeping the law? Answer that and then tell why. So answer that and tell why. Okay, and then and then maybe write down under that, what does keeping the law do for you? And when does it kick in? Remember, you're saved first, then you keep the law. Okay, but I want you to answer that. All right, and number two... I'm not going to give you too much. Okay. Uh, well, hold on. I'm trying to get a good one. I want you to... Um, Matthew 10, 32. Your question is... If we openly accept or confess Jesus before men, what will he do for us? What will he do for us if we openly confess him before men? What will he do for you? Okay. Uh, that's about all I'm going to do right now. I'm not going to put too much on y'all. But at least you're getting some study. I know some of y'all are doing it because you're emailing me. Some of y'all are actually doing this. And, and it's not, you're not overloaded like me. I sit and study it all day, nonstop. Okay, but I know some of you can't do that. But you have to do that, even if it's a little bit. Do it daily. Fit that little bit in daily. You're going to start seeing yourself growing in your knowledge. You're going to start seeing yourself going up, up, up with your knowledge, your wisdom, your understanding of God. And then somewhere in here, he's going to use you for whatever your purpose is. But you got to grow. You got to grow, okay? Now, I'm not going to overload you with stuff because I already gave you stuff this morning to do. Look on my community page, and there's a couple things you can do there. And I'm trying to help move you up, move you up to whatever your purpose is in life because we're running out of time, okay? And you're needed. You are needed. Whoever you are, you're needed in God's kingdom, okay, you guys? Lord Jesus, bless the people, Father. Thank you for giving us a chance to learn your word. Thank you for teaching us your word, Father. Thank you for giving us this opportunity and this chance to grow in you and learn our purpose so we can, we can be there for you, God, and we can help the people on that wide road. We can help them get on that narrow road, God. Thank you for that. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you don't know Jesus, go through this video and start it all over again. Ask him to forgive you for your sins and then stop doing them. All right? In Jesus' name, God bless each one of y'all. Anything else you need to know is in the description. If you don't know how to find the description, look at the top of my video. You'll see the title. Title. And then you'll see a little arrow beside it. Push the arrow. The description's there. Whatever you need to know is there. All right? God bless each one of you in Jesus' name.